Because the advantage it gives us is that we are articulating what the Dartmouth experience is. We are articulating what the Dartmouth community is. The college didn't do it. I don't know why they didn't do it, but they didn't do it. All they articulated was there was $100 million they had to get rid of. So I think it behooves us as students, faculty, concerned staff members, it's our responsibility to articulate that. And if it doesn't jive with what the administration is doing, then all the better. They have to know that, and they have to know it now. Thanks, guys. that we have around campus. Um, my name is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, they are part of my Dartmouth experience. The reason that every single one of the, of the people in those pictures are union people <laughs> is because not a single non-union staff member felt comfortable standing in that picture with that message because they were worried it would threaten their position at the college and threaten their job. That's the level of anxiety that we're dealing with here. It's profound and it's felt. I wrote a letter to the Valley News uh, expressing the solidarity of students with staff in this struggle and asking the administration to consider them an integral part of this community. Almost nine out of the, you know, 90% of the responses I got were from non-union staff, and the vast majority of them expressed this one sentiment, fear. It's felt deeply at this college, and my response is, how can you ask an institution to be more cost-effective, more productive, um, more efficient, when the entire workforce is operating in an environment of fear and anxiety? So part of that reason, these are stories that I've heard of like breakdowns in communication, part of that reason is that the lines of communication between um, managerial positions and staff, those lines are broken. And we're not communicating clear messages between those groups. And, um, and we're, not, we're not articulating or communicating clear values between those groups. And it's causing severe anxiety at the college. 
Yeah, I, I want to take the time frame back a little bit um, from, from where Eric started it. Uh, and, and I did so because I uh, had an email communication over the weekend um, with one of the um, 70 people who was laid off last spring. And um, she talked about the devastation in this community. Um, and she said, I want to give you a sense of what that was really about. She said, people who had worked at this institution for 30 years were escorted off campus by security. Um, they were told that um, they couldn't even come back to their office to claim their things without making appointments. People in that group had uh, you know, children who had health issues uh, that uh, they could no longer cover. And they were so, she called it, extremely disappointed by the silence of this campus. Uh, her particular letter uh, was filled with anger at the faculty. And I, and I wrote back and I said, I don't blame you. We were silent. I mean, we, were, we were cowards. Part of the reason was because we were caught off guard. Um, and in that sense, perhaps um, this administration deserves credit for saying these layoffs are coming. And um, the union then um, was able to make a call to constituencies on this campus to weigh in. And I'm very grateful to the union because I think without that call, um, none of us would be here. So it begins there. Right? But it doesn't end there. I mean, what I wrote to this woman was, I can't undo what happened last spring, though I wish I could. She said, why didn't the faculty uh, say that they were willing to take pay cuts? I said, well, at a committee of chairs meeting, many of us did. It wasn't acted on. We're saying it again, um, that we're willing to take pay cuts, um, and we're making a call for pay cuts across the campus, going all the way up the ladder. I met yesterday morning um, with another woman who is afraid of losing her job, and so she cannot have her name used publicly. Um, but she is someone with the, um, who has uh, all the dissertation in economics and has worked in a variety of programs uh, that give her a great deal of experience. And she's come up with some alternative plans. And the only thing you need to know about those plans is that they require sharing the pain Right? They require all of us to take pay cuts. And they require some students, those not on financial aid, um, to experience some raising in fees. But they allow us to fill this budget gap without layoffs. I completely agree with Eric from everything I've heard. There was all kinds of mismanagement, including plans to build buildings without fully having fundraised for them and counting on you know, endowment return on the stock market to pay for annual maintenance costs. So one of the things we've called for is to stop any buildings that are not fully endowed. Right? We should stop doing that because it's getting the college deeper and deeper into the hole. I don't actually think they're going to stop um, any of the buildings, but it's a discussion worth having. It's a discussion worth having. Um, another letter that I got um, in the course of this process is one that's worth your hearing about because although we can't stop um, the devastation for the family that have already been laid off, we can stop it for this woman. She's a single mom, raising two kids, doesn't have enough money, full-time Dartmouth employee, she takes every odd job for extra money on campus that she can, doesn't have enough money to have a car. Right? She bums rides to campus. She doesn't live on a bus line. It's part of the problem with you know, people living in park club areas in the Upper Valley. And with the fact that the towns of Hanover and Norwich and surrounding areas are too expensive for a lot of people to live in who work here. And so people have to live farther and farther away. But she said, you know, even as stretched as she has been, she loves working here. She believed the rhetoric of family. She loves going to games. She loves interacting with students. And she said, if I lose my job, I lose, in capital letters, everything. Everything. So when we talk about, oh, well, one of the things that, that we on the faculty have decided to speak out want to do is say, when we talk about budget cuts, let's talk about what they really are. Right? Layoffs are not abstract. It's not a ledger book where we're balancing the budget. It's real people's lives. Right? There are people in that group I was told yesterday of that 60 to 70 that were laid off last spring whose houses are at risk. Right? The kids are healthcare. I mean, 
that's 